One moment that will stick with me through this Canadians Leaf series will be in game three when the Canadians decided to challenge a goal from Rasmus Sandin. And on the Sportsnet broadcast, Mark Bergevin up in his skybox or whatever, looking at the play, pointing at the screen. And of course, people seeing that think, oh, well, Mark Bergevin might want to see if this team could challenge this. And it's kind of opened up a bit of an interesting discussion about whether or not Mark Bergevin was the one who really wanted that challenge uh, or if that really was a decision from Dominic Ducharme. So let's, let's, let's broaden the question even more here. How much influence do you think Mark Bergevin has over Dominic Ducharme's coaching decisions? I think that coach's challenge was just one example of a lot of things that go beyond, beyond closed doors. I mean, uh, Bergevin has been obviously been around for quite a few years and Ducharme who's trying to establish himself as a head coach. I think there's a lot of uh, input from Bergevin's uh, side because he did bring him in, he did hire him, and he wants everything to look obviously very, very positive. But uh, it's uh, it, it can run into a, a tough situation when you have conflict of, of opinions with the GM. I've been there before. GM and coaches, they get into a situation where they're not in agreement, and ultimately we know who wins that uh, that fight. But uh, I think that uh, uh, Dominic Ducharme is kind of in a, in a tough place because there's a lot of information that's coming through his desk from upstairs. And uh, whether he likes it or not, that's the reality of the situation. And it doesn't make, necessarily make it always that much fun. And the bottom line, it's not working. I think you go back to when Bergeron fired Stefan Waite in the middle of a game. And afterwards, Stefan Waite said that Bergeron told him that he needed to get Terry Price going. And if he didn't get going, then his job was going to be the next one that was going to be on the line. And that's why he had mm -hmm. to fire Stefan Waite. And I think that factors into what we're talking about here now uh, with Dominic Ducharme. I think Bergevin is fighting to save his job. And I think he's sort of coaching this team. Uh, you know, when, when Ducharme was brought in here, we were told he was the modern day coach. He was good with young players. He was going to be in a more of an offensive system, uh, be more you know, aggressive. And then, you know, Caulfield and Kutkinemi and Romanov are all healthy scratches to start the playoffs. That doesn't sound like, a modern day young coach's decision to me. Um, so, and then you mentioned that video. I mean, you know, with John Cedric beside him on the walkie talkie, I'm yeah. talking to somebody down on the bench, and like that was a good goal. I mean, was that, and I yeah. think it was also an example of when you saw how animated Bergeron was in the booth, he lets his emotions get the best of him, I think. I think in contract negotiations, he makes it emotional, he makes it personal. That was like an emotional decision. Like he was obviously upset that his team had fallen behind. And look, 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 that's no good. That goal is no good. And you can't be a GM like that. I mean, most times they go to a GM's box, win, lose or not, the GMs are sort of sitting there. So if the inside he might be stewing, but he's, you know, portraying calmness and whatever. And that that hasn't been there with Bergeron. I think he's, he's become desperate. Um, you know, what happens you know, if now if the Habs are eliminated by the least, does you know, Jeff Molson bring him back? Part of me thinks he does. I think Jeff Molson's hitched his cart to Mark Bergeron. But, you know, with, with bringing in Ducharme, and I, Ducharme was put in a really tough spot. You know, you're, you're brought in. He's the guy who brought you here. He's the guy who's giving you the opportunity to have the job you've been dreaming of ever since you got into coaching, the coach of the Montreal Canadiens. You're a rookie coach. Are you going to argue with him or disagree with him? Uh, I think Claude Julien would. I think Claude Julien, when he was there, had enough tenure and enough time in the NHL to say, no, we're not reviewing that call, or no, we're doing whatever. And, and I, uh, no, I mentioned a column I wrote. In any management position, you know, before the season started, Richard said that everybody, you know, all the coaches, the GM, everybody agreed that Caulfield, Romanov, and Kakinyemi should be healthy scratches. Then he said over the video review, everybody agreed that they should call for a video review. Well, in management in any business, and I've been in a management position, in, in management in every, any business, if everybody in the boardroom agrees on everything, that's not a healthy environment for any business to succeed. You want to surround yourself with people who are going to disagree with you and people who aren't going to be afraid to have a different opinion. You might not go with it. You make the final decision when you're the guy in charge, but you want people around you who think differently than you. At least that's how most successful companies work. 
And that, when I heard that, that sort of concerns me. If everybody in Canadians management agrees on everything, that tells me that people are maybe afraid to disagree with the guy in charge. Well, I think that Dominic Ducharme is kind of a Randy Cunningworth 2.0, a guy who's not getting a fair shake that I don't He's think... He's got a shudder can... right now. Randy my, minus the language issue, though. Yes, oh, minus the language issue. But, you know, he's not really getting the opportunity to go and coach. And I think that move by Mark Bergevin, even though they said, oh, no, it wasn't just, you know, him. There was, uh, you know, other people involved in it. But... <laughs> You look at the video of it and you clearly knew that like that goal was not going to be called back. You know, that was the other thing that was just so unanimous from everyone else kind of watching outside of the Montreal Canadiens management booth that that was not the right call to do. But I think Dominic Ducharme was in a position where he's saying, you know what, everyone else is telling me to do this. He doesn't have the same kind of experience that a Claude Julien would have had if he was in that position that would say, no, this is not the call that I'm going to do right now. And I just think it's a little bit unfortunate that Dominic Ducharme is not able to fully make the decisions that he wants to make because he does have pressure from management on him. Yeah, when Randy Cunningworth was thrown into a similar situation and then he was gone at the end of the season, the language factor played in and then he was never heard from again. That was, and you know, I, I fear, I worry that for Ducharme, it could be in the same situation if they don't bring him back next season. Is he going to get another chance to coach in the NHL, or is that going to be it? You know, and unfortunately, right or wrong, you know, the coach has to listen to his boss, and if he wants to protect his his best interest, which is longevity, uh, you know, and have some success, he goes with what he's told, and you know, it's not always the healthiest scenarios um, to have, and it's uh, it can be really challenging, and it can be. Uh, Quite upsetting. Does anyone know where Randy Cunningworth is now? I think he was a scout at one point with Buffalo. Really? And he was he was a heck of an AHL coach. He was yeah, he was a good he coach. Was a good coach. Team he was good was and he was yeah. thrown into that tough situation and then the whole language thing and then he was just like, you know. And that was I mean, Randy Cunningworth will go down in history, as at least as long as Jeff Molson owns the team, as the last English coach. The Canadians will ever have because Jeff Molson after that day made it very clear that whoever coaches the Canadians moving forward and GM must be bilingual and that was Randy Cunningworth that that will be his claim to fame I think going forward with the Canadians and maybe Randy Cunningworth didn't have a choice he said listen you got to take the job maybe he didn't want the job and you know uh, you you don't have a choice take the job that's it that's all and uh, mm. obviously was not uh, it was not the best of decisions Interesting. Um, in the comment section, if you happen to know where Randy Cunningworth is, and I'm not meaning that like, oh, I don't know where he actually like is. You know, I'm sure he's doing something with his life. But if he's working in hockey somewhere, as a scout somewhere, let us know in the comment section below. It'd be really good to, to uh, Wikipedia. He's not yeah. currently working in hockey, but wow. we, we take Wikipedia with a grain of salt. So, so let us know in the comment section uh, how influential. How influential, I should say, uh, Mark Bergevin may be on Dominic Ducharme's coaching decisions in the comments section below. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, and check out HockeyInsideOut.com for our full episode. <laughs>